actually know what, the, what you're doing. Um, <laughs> so I think we're rolling. Okay. Yeah. So, hello there, little school girl, Ron Scott. Hello. Uh, I'm a little schoolboy, Clive Davis, yeah. too. I'm a little school girl. In and... School. What's that one from uh, Anna Mercado? Three, three little girls in school. But we're not talking Anyways. the Mikado run. <laughs> <laughs> Even better than the Mikado. Yes. Mad Foxes. Mad Foxes. A very special type of film. <laughs> um, from 1981. 81, yeah. A Swiss Spanish co production. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe shot mostly in. Barcelona, I think, and, and maybe some studio stuff in uh, mm -hmm. Switzerland. Uh, also known as Los Violadores, which I guess is the Violetas okay. or something yeah. in Spanish. And also Stingray 2 yeah. in the Netherlands. Right, okay. Uh, yeah. So I was wondering about this because oh. the main character uh, drives a Corvette right. Stingray, right? Mm -hmm. And if, if, if you see near the end of the film when they're in the the movie theater uh -huh, uh -huh. studio part, it's actually written on the wall. Oh, right. Yeah, I didn't notice that. So there's like a chalkboard where it's like the, the title of the movie that they're shooting. Oh, right. Is, okay. Is, uh, what was it? Because... Uh, yeah, so what was it again? Uh, Sting Stingray 2. Yeah. Stingray. So it's actually written on the wall, Stingray 2, ah. as the name of the movie that they're shooting ah, okay. at the end there. So I, That's I, I was, interesting. I... I thought that that had, must have had something to do with it but I didn't really understand the well I was trying to think what the st Stingray what this was a fake sequel to right mm -hmm. and right. the first thing that came to mind is there's a film from 78 called Corvette Summer okay which is also known as Stingray mm -hmm. with Mark Hamill oh really yeah uh, directed by Matthew Robb who made like Dragon Slayer and mm -hmm. Batteries Not Included oh yeah okay but I don't think that was actually released as Stingray I think it was a working title right right but then there's another film from 78, which I've not seen, called Stingray, mm -hmm. with Christopher Mitchum, oh. um, Robert's uh, brother, brother, or is he son? I can never remember. Anyway, okay. one of the Mitchums. One of the Mitchums. Maybe son, I think. Son, okay. So I'm guessing maybe Stingray was a hit in Switzerland? Okay. I don't know. Maybe. Um, yeah, directed by... Paul Grau uh, credit as well all the credits are fake English right. yeah, yeah. Uh, for uh, the producer Erwin C. Dietrich who was kind of like the Roger Corman of Switzerland he, uh -huh. he churned right, out right. a whole bunch of these things I noticed the only other credit Paul Grau had as a director was um, one of the one in the Six Swedes series which is like Six Swedish Nymphs. Uh, I think I think I've seen Six Swedes at a campus. Okay. And I think he did one called Six Swedes at the Alps. Okay. There's another one. The one I've always wanted to see is the one where they run a petrol station called right. Six Swedes at a Pump. <laughs> <laughs> so it's you know it's all like yes, that's great. blonde den and denim cutoffs bending over cars and stuff yes. like that and you know all this stuff. But that's by the by, Ron, because we're talking <laughs> bad foxes. Mad foxes. So I, I, I actually couldn't figure out why they actually named it Mad Foxes. The Stingray 2, I thought, would have made sense because of the the, the, the film they were filming at the end. And then the, well, and he and the violators would make sense as yes. well. But I, I never really understood where Mad, Mad Foxes no. fits up. Anyway. Well, and he drives a that Stingray. Is, right? That is n probably the least of the mis mysteries involved <laughs> with this movie. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a, it's a head-scratcher. We should point out that we watched the... Uh, full 77 minute version which which really zips along ah. um, not a moment wasted no <laughs> yes no or alternately 77 <laughs> minutes <Yes>. wasted <laughs> um, yeah no th this one's very special mm. uh, so we begin with uh, well this stingray well before we get into the okay uh, into the <laughs> <laughs> into the summary yeah. I, I'd, I'd like to hear about the background your, your background with this movie uh, how in the world <laughs> did you ever come across this movie how, you, how in what way did you come across actually, it actually uh, Mad Foxes is kind of interesting because um, 
it kind of caught me by surprise because mm -hmm. I assumed I had seen pretty much all of the really kind of uh, heavy hitters in mm -hmm. the kind of Euro trash world of mm -hmm. exploitation movies of right. the 60s and 70s and 80s, mm -hmm. the Italian, Spanish mm -hmm. stuff. Um, I th you know, I haven't seen them all. There's still gems to be discovered. But in terms of like, you know, major mm -hmm. ones. But this one I hadn't seen. And I'd heard of it, but it hadn't really been sold to me like... I thought it was just another one on the pile of a bunch of mm -hmm. exploitation movies of that era that I'm going to get to at some Indeed, point. Right? Yeah. And then my good friend, uh, Nicholas Sheehan, mm -hmm. who's uh, in Canada, uh, he, he used to live here in Shinagawa. In Tokyo. We live in Japan. Yeah, yes. in Tokyo. Yeah. Yes. So... Um, and he kind of sat me down and said, no, 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 you, you, you have to see this oh. film. I, I'm eternally grateful to him for it because it, it, I wasn't expecting anything on this level. And we watched it together and it was, it was so funny. <laughs> I mean, I would like to sit down and watch this film with you, actually, Edward, uh. but I, but I, and then I had to watch it again to write the review for the book because I, I wanted to remember everything. Uh. I, and I have to confess, I watched it a third time uh, for this uh, podcast on Saturday, uh -huh. and then I watched it again this morning. <laughs> <laughs> I was just, I got addicted to uh, to this film. Okay. Um, so that's four times I've seen this. Wow. Okay. Now, and I could easily watch it watch right now. Like. <laughs> well, I have to say that you you have to thank your friend in Canada for, and I have to thank you. For introducing me to it because it's hands down my my new favorite movie of all time. <laughs> I'm is, so glad to I hear was, that. I was flabbergasted by this movie. Flabbergasted. I was just like, I was like, what is this? And then I actually went, went and read your your review in your book oh, first yeah. before I watched yeah. it, and you very it was quite long in comparison to the other ones. Yes. Like, it's, it's, yeah. You gave, gave it quite a long thing. Uh -huh. and you were very glowing in your review of it. <laughs> Um, and so I was like, oh, okay, this should be interesting. But uh, I, I, I kind of, you know, I, I go in with a bit of a grain of salt with the exploitation movies in general. Right, right. So, yeah, right. Kind of yeah. So, they tend to um, sometimes be a bit of hyperbole. Yeah, right? hyperbole, yeah. So, and a lot of people, if you like that genre, definitely you love this movie, yeah. So, so at this point, I was kind of like, I was keeping a mind, an open mind, but I, uh -huh. I didn't have high hopes for it. But, okay. But I have to be honest, it just left me on the floor. <laughs> Uh, literally and figuratively, actually, I was on the floor at one point. Um, I, I unfortunately decided to watch it half on the train and half in a school. Uh, I was here, wondering here if I should give you a heads up. Yeah, and because I pr may have ruptured something trying to <laughs> hold in the laughter. It was, I, I laughed more at this movie than I have laughed at most comedies released in the mm. last 20 years. Uh, and uh, it was. Just an, it was thoroughly, thoroughly an enjoyable experience. It was just so entertaining, and yeah. I was there wasn't a single moment of the entire movie that I wasn't either uh, at least at, at least smiling, right? And and if if not like chuckling to myself or like full out like belly laughing, it was it was. But so but here's the thing about this movie, which is which is what the mystery, the main mm. mystery of this movie is. I can't decide. How much of it was on purpose, you know? Because right. it seems at seemed at times that it was almost meant to be funny. That there was there was that there was actually some parts that were that was like it was purposely comedy, right, right. Kind of thing. But then, but I, but I, but then I was thinking like, but was it like? So that's what I can't decide. Yeah, that, it was, dude, that line is just completely blurred to the point yes. where it's just gone. That's where, what's fascinating where, where, about where it. Where I can't tell. There's. There's the so bad it's good movie, mm. which is just because they think they're really good, but it's really bad. Right. right? And then there's the comedy, you know. But it's I can't figure out where yeah. it falls in that in that spectrum. So. No, it's I'd I'd say it's probably safe to say it's you would categorize it a bad. Film. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's yeah. yeah, and so and I'm I, misjudged. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> badly misjudged. But 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 so I mean, you go through any checklist. That mm. you would use to, uh, you know, qualify whether a movie is good or bad, and it has literally nothing. Right. right? I mean, you go through the the script. The script is 
<laughs> like I, I, I figured, uh, my my thoughts of, was that they must have, of course, it was written originally and done originally in Spanish, and they must have used whatever the 1981 equivalent of Google Translate was to <laughs> translate this movie because like the the lines were so <laughs> unbelievably funny, but it was, but again, I couldn't tell if it was on purpose or not. Big, and so, and then of course, so so anyway, the script was terrible. Um, the acting was exponentially doubly terrible because you had these Spanish actors who were like physically acting just horribly you can just right. watch them and with no sound off and know that they were terrible right. actors and then they put these uh, like English speaking yeah. voice over actors on top of it which were also terrible actors right. so you get like a doubly terrible actor So and then the, the setting was most most sets were mostly terrible my favorite was the karate uh, the, the <laughs> kickboxing studio which was like, a, the, like 20 people working out within inches of each other because they were just maximizing that space right right uh, the costumes were terrible they were the special effects were just like like obviously someone had filled a bag of ketchup and that was what they used the port ketchup was. it was by all intents and purposes by all accounts this movie should be just a terrible terrible movie but it was fantastic yeah, it was it is but, right? and so that's why it's where the mystery is I can't understand why I enjoyed it so much it was just so unbelievably enjoyable so yeah. entertaining why, why on earth I've watched this four times <laughs> but, just... but this is the thing is that you said it was four times you, you watched it again yeah Every movie that we've watched uh, up to and to this point, this is our fourth or fifth movie, uh -huh. right? So everything, as soon as I've finished watching the movie, I just delete it from my mm. my device, right? I just don't need it anymore. I've seen it once. That's all I need to do. And I've got some notes. I think, but this one, I was like, I can't, I can't delete this movie. I have to keep this. I will probably come back and watch this movie again. I, I've never done that before. As well, I think it's a tragedy because I want to shout this movie from the rooftops. <laughs> I want to tell Here's everyone. I want no, but the thing is, I want to tell everyone I know to watch this movie. I right. know I have friends that would totally enjoy this movie. Uh -huh. However, I have no idea how anyone would ever watch this movie. The only way I was able to watch this movie because you had it on file already. Right, uh, like the, the normal like uh, avenues that you find to find these movies. I can't. I cannot find this right. movie anywhere. It's not. A well, there is a anywhere. DVD. There is a DVD, yeah. but I don't. Yeah. I don't think it, you can find it almost anywhere. It, might, very, it very may difficult. be out of print. I'm yeah. Sure. So I mean, so the thing is, that I want to tell everyone to watch the movie, but it's. I don't know how they would watch it. So right. that's the thing. Is, so uh, I'm. I feel like. Uh, I'm. Uh, I'm feeling quite sad about it because I was. <laughs> I want everyone to watch it. So. Yeah. So that's why I don't want to delete my copy yet because right. it's right. my copy now. So. Anyway. Um. Yeah. Oh no, that's good. Uh, I'm pleased that. <laughs> That we're on the same page on this one. Yeah. So, <laughs> so let's get into it. So anyway, the the, mm. the summary is is that if you can find this movie, mm. Mad Fox is absolutely one hundred percent watch it. Yeah, check it out. <coughs> but it's it maybe more difficult to find than than anything. So I'm I'm, I'm sure you, if you try hard enough, you'll be able to <coughs> you know mm. scare up a copy. So we start off uh, well after this, we have the opening credits or this shot of this stingray. Going down the highway. Well, although to be to be fair, uh -huh. they may actually have it on YouTube. Oh really? Yeah, I'm looking on YouTube now, and it looks like it's on there. But the trailer's on there. It looks like it says the full movie. Oh really? But it might be. You know those things it's sometimes where you click on it and it's actually just yeah. some movie studio logos and then a link to. Yeah, it might not be. So yeah. I don't know, but you might be able to. So, yeah. Anyway, so yeah, so we start off and. Um, well, first of all, let's talk about uh, the soundtrack. Oh, and so also the other thing I was going to mention is that so I started making notes when I started wa we started watching the movie. I started making notes of what I was doing, uh -huh. but I just gave up about halfway through because <laughs> I could have written a ten-page essay about any given minute of mm, this movie, mm. and uh, I just it? sort of like I just gave up trying, even trying to even uh, comment on it. So I, I I wrote down just some of my favorite lines for okay. all and a couple of the main points, but I, I, think, I didn't so. know if this was possible. I think you might even like this movie more yeah, than me. Yeah, <laughs> I really, really, really enjoyed this movie. Yeah, so a lot. So yes, yeah, so let's, so we start off and, and let's talk about the soundtrack because okay, yes. we have our first song. So there's a, a heavy metal band mm. on this song called Crocus. Okay. Yeah, yes. and they have two tracks. Two tracks. The opening one, uh, easy, easy rockers. Yes. Uh, <laughs> classics. That, I looked them up as well, and apparently they are uh, legit. Uh, I actually have heard of them. I don't oh, okay. I, 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 like they, I, like never 
listened to their their stuff, but I'd heard the name before. I don't know uh, yeah. much about them. Are, are they they're are they, well? I looked them up on Discogs, and uh, they're a proper. Uh, you know, they weren't just like a, a studio band or something for the movie. They're a proper, mm-hmm. proper heavy band, metal yeah. Swiss, Swiss, Swiss yeah. yeah. And they've got a whole bunch of albums, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. and some people had commented. So like they have a yeah. fan base. Yeah, because well, I, I remember when I saw on the credits that. This, there were songs by Crocus. I was like, yeah. oh, I've, 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 like it was sort of a vague recollection mm. of, a, of a band called Crocus. The only thing I thought of, I think, was um, Periubu. The lead singer Peri used to be oh. called Crocus Behemoth, oh, right? Okay. But, but, yeah. it's not, yeah. but I mean, I, I think it's in that kind of um, that genre of like very, like very little known heavy metal, right, like, like right. Anvil. And like, like yeah. that, that would be Anvil and stuff. Like that. Would you have heard of that because you were once a uh, metal? I, I, head, I, was, I, I mean, I don't think I ever listened to them, but okay. I used to be into that kind of movie, that, that okay. kind of music. Uh, and so I don't think I ever listened to the Crocus, but I, I assume it was sort of like on a list somewhere of other heavy metal bands that I mm. maybe like were similar to what I. But, right. Yeah, but I thought they were both quite good songs actually. Maybe, well, maybe yeah, for that kind of thing, I quite yeah, like yeah. Easy Rockers and yeah. the, uh, Celebration, which comes which is is the. They're, they're both very uh, specific to their scenes. I think. Yes, they yeah, fit yeah, yeah, the. Yeah, yeah, very much. So once we're done with the credits, Easy Rockers, uh, we get into it, and there's a guy, Hal, played by uh, Robert O'Neill, whose real name is really Jose Gras, uh, who's fucking awful. You know, he's, <laughs> I mean, he, he's really bad. And he's playing this kind of. <laughs> He's a dick, isn't he? Basically, yeah, he's yeah, like yeah, this yeah. kind of preppy dick who drives around in his cherished yeah. Corvette Stingray, mm-hmm. right? Which, well, we will get into that later. But, but, um, yeah, and he's driving through the city, and he's got this girl with him, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and yeah, the, the the thing with the dubbing, I know there's bad dubbing mm-hmm. in lots of movies, and it's you know it's a bit passe to laugh at, you know, you know, you get used to that as a bad movie. But this dubbing is just on another. <laughs> From straight away, like the first time, she's a. She's a I love your accent. Oh, I can get rid of you. Like it's like <laughs> non sequiturs like, all the way, right? This is, this is what I was talking about. Where I it really blurred that line between like, was it just a bad movie or was it right? Like, so com- like intentionally comedic because the it reminded me a lot of the times of the that, that genre movie where they would just take the old bad movies and then redub it for, mm. on purpose yes, you, that's know, like, true, actually, you know yeah. like you know they would just take off the soundtrack and then just yes. do it for fun like yes. the, um, Mr. Science Theater or whatever those right. not, not Mr. Science but the, the, those types of I movies. know what you mean yeah so it reminded me of like it was mis- like these these voice actors are having are taking the piss right I mean yeah. they, they must be like they must be just doing this for fun right yeah. but I, I, I'm not sure if they were or not. The I thing is, I, I recognize the voices sound very familiar. So I think it's just the same people who did this for a living at the right. time, right? Yeah, yeah, just yeah, yeah. dubbing exports. Yeah, so yeah. my guess is no, that there's another day yeah. at the office, right? <laughs> Although they do sound, you can imagine that they're turning bong water brown, yeah. right? While they're doing this. <laughs> but yeah, so he's this kind of preppy dick type in yeah. his cover stringer with this girl who's, it's her 18th birthday. Which they mention over and over yeah, again, yeah. right? Uh, Babsy. Babsy, yeah. Pr- played by Andrea Albany or Sally Sullivan. Mm-hmm. I, I have to admit, I quite uh, fancy this girl. She's this. I thought, she's quite hot. You know, you know. To be honest, whenever I look back at like movies from the seventies and eighties, just because of the style, I never find the women that attractive. Mm-hmm. To be honest, I never really like because okay. just because of the I don't know into the hair yeah. and the, the, the makeup and the clothes. But I thought all She's the women cute. in this movie, yeah, all of them. All actually, of them, I really like the blonde girl actually a lot. I thought she right. was crazy. I thought all of them were like these girls are actually. Yeah, really, they deliberately really picked uh, yeah, yeah, good they looking, picked pretty, pretty women. Yeah. Anyway, uh, enough of our enough male chauvinism yeah, so anyway. for the time yeah, being. Yeah, so. <laughs> so anyway, we're just getting into the character of Hal. That's right. That's <laughs> right. So uh, they stop at a, at a traffic light. Right, traffic light. Right, that they're just kind of. Uh, sitting there waiting for the light to turn green I can't remember they might be making out or something but they're you know kind of flirty yeah, yeah, or whatever yeah. and suddenly you get this knock on the hey you stop that or something along this line and at the window there's this there's a biker right and it's it's there's a biker gang that pulled up alongside them and they're Nazi bikers basically and not only are they Nazi bikers they're very 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 gay Nazi bikers <laughs> it's like 
the gayest biker gang that you've ever seen in your life. Uh, your your yeah, gay yeah, dad yeah, goes yeah. off immediately, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And yeah, he's like, hey, yeah, I want to talk to you. <laughs> Why in the window down? And there's this fucking inane exchange, mm. uh, something along the lines of, what are you doing? Kissing that bitch? Yeah, <laughs> Just because you own, you, you, you think you own the you're road? Giving too much credit, like uh, like how much acting you're doing right now. It was like the, like all of the lines were so like monotone and expressive. It was like it was like, hey, I don't like it. I don't like your st- I don't like your car. Hey, what are you doing, kissing? Hey, you bitch. Right? It was just. Fuck off, yeah, that's all. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's, yeah, uh, yeah, that's true. And it's, it's so good. And from the beginning as well, the lines are, they don't quite, like, people, they're almost non seconds Like, people yeah. reply to each other. Uh-huh. It's almost not related to what the person just said. Exactly, yeah, yeah. And I was, I was wondering about the translation of the movie. Like, did they just literally just take the, the lines that were said in Spanish and then just translate them directly and they didn't there's something lost in translation or because a lot of times it also sound had that like element of being a little bit too formal you know where like the right. you know like they did use like a dictionary to, to translate yes. it and they yeah. just found like the most formal words and it just sounds so awkward all the time right so and I was like I, I, I frequently thought to myself during this movie like oh I wish I could write like this you know like, right, it was right. like you, this is like the kind of script you want to write for fun to, yeah, to, yeah. to, to be comedic but I, I don't think it was on purpose though well I, I remember I wrote in my review actually I said something along the lines it was dubbed by people English wasn't their first language but now actually thinking about it and realising that I have heard these voices in dozens of yeah. you know hundreds maybe I, I think that's not the case and thinking about it you might have had this experience here in Japan because we both have had jobs, uh, you know, uh, in either drama, TV dramas, or movies, or or doing voiceovers or something. And you know, there's that strange thing where you've been living abroad for a long time in a country which doesn't speak English as yes. its first language, and sometimes you kind of forget. I, I'm like, I know sometimes I've been asked to deliver lines in English, mm. but they've been kind of pre-translated for me, mm. but. Because I've been away for so long, I've kind of lost my judgment. judgment Does this really, sound is, natural? Is this actually wrong? Yeah. I can't, yeah, I can't tell you. Know you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, you yeah, genuinely forget. You forget. So yeah, I, th- yeah, I think that might be the case. I think these people were living abroad for uh-huh. years and years and years, working as well, I think after a while of dubbing these movies, they kind of forgot what well, natural English Well, sounds well the thing like. is, because the, the translators must have been native English speakers because they mm. had, like, their pronunciation was perfect. It was fine. It sounded like right. native. But so, intonation. But, but, but there's also, there's the other side of the coin which is that sometimes you go on these these jobs mm. uh, like these voiceover jobs and they give you the English and it's wrong and it's either like you either try to edit it for free and you like you're, right. you become like their editor and yes. you don't get paid to do that or yes. you just read it as is and that's their job right, right and right. so I know some people will just go and they'll just read completely nonsensical English as naturally as they can right, right. and so and I, I was wondering if that's what they did they just said yeah. okay well that's, that's the line okay I'll read it right so yeah, I, I and who knows? I mean, it might have been one of those things where, right? We've got three hours to dub this yeah, thing. Yeah, get yeah, on with it. Yeah, yeah, no it, prep yeah, time yeah, exactly, or. Yeah. But it was. Yeah. Yeah, but I thought that, I mean, the dubbing was part of the, yes. the charm but, of this movie, really. So yes, but yeah. by no means is that. You know, I mean, if uh, sorry, maybe we're, we're kind of a here. We're a bit like we're in on the joke and the yeah, yeah, season, yeah. but uh, we'll get to it. Don't worry. But yeah, don't believe us keep listening this isn't just about uh, funny dubbing there's yeah, yeah, yeah. so much yeah, and more and the thing is that I'm not usually into funny dubbing uh, no that much, neither am I you know, and I, or even just dubbing especially I, any foreign movie I'll always go for subtitles over, mm. over dubbing I just never like just can't stand right. dubbing in general you know but, so that's why I was kind of like when you told me it was a dub movie I was kind of like oh really it was a dub uh. movie right kind of thing but it was like you couldn't watch this in Spanish it just wouldn't have the same it just wouldn't have the same effect it had to be dubbed you know to be have the correct effect um, uh, yeah and I watch a lot of uh, kung fu movies as well and stuff. so I've, you know many 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 years ago I got over the whole you know haha sounds funny thing yeah, so yeah. yeah so yeah believe us this is this is a special yeah, special movie a special yes. type of movie so anyway so uh, this, uh, this was actually my first note that I wrote okay. was, was oh that dubbing that was the first <laughs> thing I wrote <laughs> So there's this little exchange. These bikers seem pissed off that this guy is driving his car with Stingray yeah. with well, his bitch. Which, which is also I wanted to interject about like this scene. So this scene was supposed to set up 
the main conflict for the entire yeah. movie, <laughs> which yeah. was, was basically the biggest failure of this movie, which is that there really is no conflict whatsoever. No, no. It's just these guys kind of like tormenting this guy because they don't really like his car. Yes. Right? And it's like, oh, well, you think you're better than us because you have this cool car or something, yeah. right? And he's like, hey, go away, blah, blah, blah. And then... <laughs> and, then the <laughs> and interestingly, showing up, obviously, how important this car was to yeah. the production... They never damage it. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Never, 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 never. <laughs> that would be the thing you'd think. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, it's slightly getting ahead of myself. You'd think these bikers at some point would at least smash the windscreen, yeah, yeah. but they treat it exactly. with kid gloves. It's, it's, <laughs> it's the most and even though, valuable even, thing on set. Even though they say over and over again how much they hate this yes, car yes. and what it stands for, all they do is they just touch it. And yes, <laughs> in fact, one of the lines of dialogue I wrote down, at one point where the biker says, I wouldn't even shit on it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and they don't they yeah, don't they, 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 they just don't. lightly kind of they touch it a few little, times yeah yeah so um, and so so that was the thing is that so because of this basic interaction like hey I don't really like your car and you, you think you're better than us you know hey go away stop bothering me therefore it becomes a bloodbath you know yes, like of yes. course it's, it's, <laughs> it's not exactly <laughs> Hamlet is it <laughs> but anyway this is what we this is what we're going to deal yeah, with yeah, okay so, so um and then the biker just spits in his face, yeah, doesn't yeah. he? He's like, oh, okay. It was actually quite surprising. Mm. Um, and then the light turns green. Yeah. The Corvette uh, you know, tears uh, well, for, no, rubber. No, first it turns green and he goes, oh, you bastards. And Sorry. then they go away. Yes. And then yeah, that's goes, right. That's right. <laughs> and, um, and then I, I, to give the illusion of speed... Someone seems to have lit the flare or something underneath the <laughs> yeah. wheel of the car. You could clearly see a flare yeah. left behind. The movie. <laughs> and then, and this happens a couple of times. So the conflict's been set up. They they race off, and then one of the bikers, for apparent <laughs> no good reason, basically drives into a car, yes. flips over, and the bike explodes. Yeah. I had to rewind this part because I was like. What? Just yes. <laughs> is he like the worst biker in the world? Like, as so much as I like, just... It's like the car speeds up, and so I was like, what even caused that? So I, and it was, so I, I wrote it, and I looked for something for it, and the, the car sped up and kind of like, kind of almost like cut him off, but it was like, all you really need to do is to put on your brakes. It was, yeah. yeah, it was just a... Yeah. It doesn't it was, have... It, I don't think they had a proper, like, chase choreographer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So it, was, it was quite funny, though. Um, oh yeah, it's great. And, and as much of a dick as Hal is, just to be clear, I am on his side. He hasn't actually done anything. No, yeah, yeah. So just one of the buckers is a moron. Yeah. <laughs> and anyway, well, so anyway, are, actually. yeah. So on they go. Hal and Babsy uh, go to this club called the Big Apple, right? And uh, they're celebrating her 80th birthday, which they've mentioned several Seven times. times yeah. And uh, yeah, again, the dialogue here is like he goes in and he talks to a woman behind the bar, and it, it's something along the lines, "Hey, do you remember me?" And then she says something like, "Yes, of course I remember you." <laughs> oh, that's a shame. I was hoping you'd remember me. <laughs> the fuck. My my favorite is he kept he said it at least two or three times. Where he goes, "Hey, we're really thirsty. Please give us drinks. We're really thirsty." Hey, hey, we're really we're thirsty dry over, here. over here. We're really thirsty over here. I was like, who goes to a bar and says, we're thirsty? <laughs> and there's some champagne on ice, luckily. The last the last, bottle. Bottle. last bottle. And yeah, so they sit down and they, they basically they make a big deal of it. And she giggles and, oh, yeah, we've got some champagne. We're going to have some drinks here and some drinks. And there's some close-ups of some other people looking at them and laughing. And then she mentions this, hey, this is for your 18... 18- Wonderful years of oh, you're just making fun of me because I'm not as sophisticated as you. <laughs> and then, of course, don't forget the completely choreographed swing dance. Here we go. Yeah. Oh yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. So this club apparently also doubles as some kind of fifties revival. I think it was swing. Yeah, swing. Yeah, swing dance. Yeah. 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 The, the song is actually called The Moogie Boogie. Oh, okay. <laughs> and it's by this band, The Jackies. Okay, I look yeah. them up. Yes. Yeah. And again. They are also uh, band, have yeah. a career they actually, albums. Actually, paid for the rights for these yes. songs. Yes, right. uh, they're uh, again Swiss. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so there's yeah, so basically there's all these uh, girls in like long fifties dresses yeah. and guys in tight yeah. chinos. Yeah, and they do this whole. Yeah. But y- usually in a scene like this, in a normal movie, you would have like 
a few, maybe 10 seconds or 15 seconds to set up, okay, there's people dancing over here. But no, <laughs> they have to completely choreograph an entire dance and show it from beginning to end, yes. every single second of this dance, right, right, right down to the, and then yeah. the, she, he, he holds her like, like this, like vital, yeah. like. <laughs> and the thing, I'm guessing this must have been shot at the studio, and so yeah, yeah. because you don't even get like any attempt, like, certainly the main characters aren't in the same scene in the background watching yeah. her but yeah. there's not, not not even any cutaways yeah, yeah, yeah. to them watching no, no. Yeah, it's yeah, just, yeah. It's just random yeah. different okay scene. you guys do your choreographed dance and we're going to film it and that was it so yeah and it was yeah no editing no cutting or anything and also it's like no one else is dancing it's just like a show but it's not a show no. it's obviously like the dance floor yeah. right? so it's, it's like and you do get some shots of the dance floor in this place as well. There are some people really busting some moves for the yeah. camera. Yeah, yeah, in the back. Yeah. But during this, not during oh, this. Oh, no, no, this is totally yeah. unrelated. Yeah. It's, it's fantastic. Yeah. Um, it's great. That's yeah. your, I think that's the f one of the first cues when I was watching the video. Like, what is this? That was one of the first things. Like, what, <laughs> what am I watching? <laughs> yeah, yeah, classic stuff. So. So yeah, anyway, and cut back to Hal, and he goes over to, he's got his own little private drinks locker, uh, yeah, right, yeah, where he's yeah. got some cutty sack or uh, something, yeah, and yeah. again, <laughs> again, he mentions how thirsty. Yeah, thirsty. Yeah, I'm thirsty. And yeah. they probably mention again how she's 18 yeah, years old. 18 years old. Um, <laughs> and they get really smashed at this uh, place, like, like really trashed, right? And our hero... Um, <laughs> thinks it's okay to drive home uh, anyway, right? He goes, oh yeah, I can take a whole barrel and I'd still be able okay yeah. to drive home. And he also mentions a few things like, oh, I better slow down or I won't be able to take this through to its full conclusion. That's some really kind of sleazy <laughs> line yeah, yeah. like that. Um, made, made exponentially awkward through the, through the translation. Yes. Yeah. And there's like, for a bit as well, there's one unnervingly long scene where Babsy just kind of stares right into the camera and giggles, right? Like she doesn't interact with <laughs> <laughs> So they leave the place and he's going to go to his awesome Corvette Stingray car to drive home. And then, wouldn't you know it, the Nazi biker gang turn up again. And um, it, it's kind of interesting. Have you noticed in all the scenes, the outdoor scenes, they have their Schwarzenegger armbands yeah, covered yeah. up. Co no, well, yeah, it's just the white, the swastika. Yeah. Is, it's just a white circle. Right, yeah, right. So, There's yeah. just, I'm, yeah. I'm guessing they couldn't... I, I read something about it. I looked something online and it said that, that I guess, because they're outside, they didn't... It yes. It was causing problems, so they had to cover it yeah. up. Yeah, because on the inside yeah. scenes, yeah, they have them. Yeah, so it's just, suddenly they're there. Yeah. Right? It's again, yeah, so. <laughs> uh, but the, that's the thing. That kind of glaring continuity mm -hmm. error in a normal film, in this, it's... It's, okay. it's it's yeah, it's you, the least of but it's, it's part of it. Yes, yeah, it's, it's the least of the problems. Exactly. Yeah, so it's like it's like yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. So yeah, so they decide uh, they're gonna get their revenge, and they beat up Hal, and they rape mm. Babsy, mm. right? Um, and this is where it kind of what I is really good about Mad Fox as well in its uncut form. I think it's not only weird and strange and awful and and slapdash. It also has this kind of edge to it, right? Because normally you watch this kind of exploitation movie. For a start, you get female nudity, mm. but not full frontal female nudity. Like when they totally strip Babsy naked, it's like, oh, oh, I kind of didn't expect to see Bush as well, right? Because mm. you normally don't. But also, Full frontal male nudity. Mm, yeah, I mean, everything. you don't. There's a lot of cocks in this, yeah, yeah, which yeah. is fine. It's maybe uh, as it should be, but yeah, it's sure. just you're not yeah, used to it. Yeah, right? it's just there. Yeah. So that's a kind of shocker. And then uh, he he uh, fingers her, mm. and she's bleeding, right? And then he takes the fingers out and rubs it on her nose. Her nose. And it's like, like, oh, you're oh. a virgin, eh? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you dirty bitch. <laughs> Something along those lines. And it's like, oh, okay, this is kind of. It does slightly more yeah. murky yeah, waters, yeah, 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 yeah. right? Um, but then when the rape does actually happen, it's 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 kind of it's it's what's his name? A stiletto, I believe his name is. Just kind of 
lies on top it of her and I, I wrote down it was wriggles a bit pro- probably the most awkward rape <laughs> scene I've ever seen you know rape scenes yeah. are meant to be make you feel uncomfortable yeah. but it wasn't uncomfortable it was sort of like <laughs> it was more confusing it was yeah. like what is happening like because he doesn't he doesn't wriggle so much as he just looks like he was just se- seizure yeah seizure yeah. on top yeah, of her he was having a seizure there and she doesn't do much of no no yeah, yeah, like she's just laying there. Lies and there. then the guy is halfway through they just turn around and leave and leave him there <laughs> yeah. and then he's we got, got a funeral tomorrow yeah yeah and he's got the best line which I, one of my favorite lines that I wrote down which is uh, hey wait for me I'm finishing <laughs> yeah so <laughs> and then he's, he's just he's twitches just, he's just twitching yeah. there and then finally he gets up and leaves right so but uh, after seeing her naked as well I'm, I still quite like Babsy she's uh, mm. got quite a smoking looking body as well <laughs> <laughs> sorry I'm quite obsessed <laughs> with the uh, Andrea Albania. I might watch yeah, more of her movies. Okay, yeah. uh, something but then, of course, you never see that character again. So they. No. Yeah, yeah. So no. Just, no. Basically, they're. Uh, she's out of the picture. Of the picture she goes, yes. I, the only thing you get, there's the next shot. I think he's leaving. Hal is leaving a hospital. Mm, yeah. And yes. so at least he's had the decency to take her to a hospital. Huh. I don't know if he's called the police or anything. Yeah. It doesn't actually say that he's brought it. He's left because he's getting himself. I don't know if he actually. Oh, ah, yeah, that's it. true. Yeah. It's not necessarily he's brought it, so we don't know. We just don't know which happened. And, but he immediately goes to someone else's house, right? Well, well, <laughs> or, well I mean, yeah, more or less. Too. Well, first he goes home and, and drinks some more. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> obviously, he's, he's, he's very non- nonchalant about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he phones up. Um, so if the gay biker gang wasn't enough, you also have the gayest karate school in in the world as well it was very much um, my friend Nicholas who turned me on to this film pointed out uh, it, it, it's like something out of if you remember the video for Judas Priest's Hot Rocking do you okay. remember them I've never they're seen all like yet. working out oh, with yeah, it yeah, yeah, yeah. it's straight out of the Judas oh, okay. Priest video. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah so the, yeah like you said uh, no no set design it's just a little <laughs> cramped little yeah. room <laughs> and there's some people doing some karate some guys lifting weights some well, well the, the, when you go back this is the first time they've, only, they've got two guys sparring in the that's first right scene. one in a and stars and yeah, stripes yeah 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 one stars and stripes and one guy is just on, there's a, and just outside of the sparring area there's a desk with a guy on a phone yes. which is like literally who's the like, director I think oh really okay. yes he's the genius oh really yeah. okay that's it yeah. so but then when you come back the second time uh, later, yes, you've got them all working out, yes. but it's like, and they must have like there's inches between these people. They they had to like <laughs> obviously choreograph where people were standing so that they wouldn't be able to hitting each other while yes. they're lifting these weights. Yeah. It was yeah, it was quite funny. So yeah, so Hal gets on the phone. He's busted up and he has some more drinks and he gets on the phone to his friend. But still friends. very nonchalant about the whole. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Babsy yeah, was yeah, raped. Yeah, yeah. So Babsy was raped. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds like a story, is one of the yeah. lines, which is, what? <laughs> so, I'm guessing rather than call the police, he decides that um, he's going to get his buds at the karate school to open up a can of revenge, right? Kick ass revenge. <laughs> and somehow he knows that they're having a funeral at the amphitheater. Well, because they said it just before they left, right? Well, no, they said, we're going to prepare for a funeral. They didn't yeah, say they at the amphitheater. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but somehow well, there, he has a, this there's information. There's a lot of like, yes. I mean, they, how did they they find his parents' house? You know, same uh, thing, yeah. right? So, so again, the least of the worries. Yeah, the movie, so. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So basically, the yeah the guys at the karate school are they obviously they're they're into this. Now. Either they were really big fans of Babsy or mm. or big whatever. But there's no like, there's, you know, there's no. Um, Moral conundrums in no, this film. No, no, no. Nothing like that. So, uh, true enough, cut to this big outdoor amphitheater, uh-huh. and the bikers are having their funeral for their fallen idiot comrade. <laughs> they've, they've, they've got the body laid out there under a flag, mm-hmm. and they they get drunk, right? And they set it on fire, right? <laughs> Wait, there's another great line there. When Hal turns up and goes, Sons of bitches, here I am. <laughs> so he announces himself. And of course, he's brought along his karate fighting buddies. So there's a big fight bikers versus mm. karate guys. And then we go into this, this weird area again, right? So mm. 
So you'd expect in this scene uh, there might be some gore or some violence mm -hmm. or some. What you don't expect <laughs> is the karate school guy to yank out the biker gang leader's cock <laughs> and ask how what shall I do cut it off and the, the, he does he cuts off his cock and, then and shoves his, it in his mouth but before that while he's trying to get the cock it takes him approximately <laughs> 10 seconds yes, to, fumble. to fumble around yes. he's put his head in the guy's zipper and is feeling around for roughly 10 to 12 seconds trying to find where the penis is right and then finally gets a hold of it and then cuts off yes and this bike is uh, again if he, he's got those rounded off shades oh. with a little moustache yeah, yeah, and yeah, uh, yeah. He's just you know, sitting there waiting for this guy to yeah, yank yeah, yeah, he doesn't move or try to knock no, hands again. No. He just like yeah, sits there. Um Yeah, so that's a bit of a wow. You don't expect Yeah, yeah, that. yeah, yeah. That was like really a whoa, yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. So after this And then of course you have to talk about the rest of the fight, which was just the most atrociously choreographed fight scene I've ever seen it was just just these guys who probably have never done karate in a day in their life that they here put this outfit on and pretend to do karate with each other and it was like there's abs you can tell there's absolutely no choreography right. whatsoever it's just sort of like okay you guys go over there and fight you guys, you guys right. go and fight in the background and so yeah. people were just they're obviously improvising what they were doing yes. yeah, so it was I'll be honest at this point hilarious. I was like yeah I've I've gone beyond <laughs> no no but there was part of the charm again in the movie yeah. like, I thought it was hilarious that yeah. they were just like it, it's, and of course they would do like this ridiculously over the top reactions like that right. like they, they this guy would do like this the worst like schoolgirl kick, kick in the world right. and, they, and the nuts would go <laughs> and they fall down right? they'd be doing it over and over again right? well to be honest they're, they're lucky to not have their cock sliced off <laughs> it was great so um so after this, uh, Hull, there's the, this kind of non sequitur scene where, I mean, it's a fucking, it's a non sequitur movie, but yeah, there's a non sequitur where he goes and shags some other woman then who's been waiting for him. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, yeah, so just yeah, at, at this part I started to get. He's a bit of a playboy, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, quite Hull? confused because I, I thought at first maybe this was his wife and that that the the Babsy was just the mistress, uh -huh. but because she was. Uh, like in a bed he just walks into her house and so I thought well maybe this maybe he's married but then she doesn't come back anymore either so then I uh, later on I figured oh that must have been just another girl that he was shagging but yeah I, don't, I, I didn't but anyway so that was the the beginning uh, well the rape, rape scene was really the beginning but the beginning right. of these really really long awkward sex scenes <laughs> yeah. so as I said 77 minutes and they did not waste a single minute of this entire movie <laughs> it's because job and I, I'd, say, I'd say I'd say at least a third of that running time are just these really awkward sex scenes which right. Right. Like, and so it was, and so it was just these people that are like okay we'll go have sex right and then there's like and so these people are these actors are probably trying to figure out what we're supposed to do now I'm wondering I mean, I don't know for, for a fact, but I, I'm wondering if maybe they, they may have actually had sex because they didn't know how to act it. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, don't know. Uh, I don't know. But anyway. Uh, certainly so, that biker didn't with Babs. No, I mean, he didn't, right? But uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, so yeah, so it just, yeah, so they have these really, and usually sex scenes are, you know, edited or cut away or you at least kind of shone a romantic light or soft right, focus right. or you know right. whatever it is or you know they cut away is it but it was just they would show the entire right from foreplay all the way to completion mm -hmm. the entire sex scene and usually not romantic or sexy at all just very right like very Big awkward potatoes. <laughs> yeah. i was like what are we watching but anyway, this girl also was quite attractive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. he's got good only, taste, Hal. Only here for just only in the movie, just for the sex scene. Right, right. right. So, so um, the aforementioned uh, karate school scene we were talking earlier, when they're all working out within inches of each other, yeah. and he's got his desk crammed way back yeah, yeah. in the corner of the window. And he's, <laughs> But it's, it's like, like steps away from where they're sparring. And yeah. You don't fall and knock their head on the desk. It's like in the same room. <laughs> so we're there and um, 
So even at this point in the movie where I've already been kind of surprised, this scene knocked me for six as well. Because <laughs> we're, okay, we're at the craft school there or whatever. And then suddenly, these bikers turn up at the karate school for revenge um, with machine guns and a, and a grenade, right? They toss a grenade into the room. And but they have to announce it. Hey, that's, this is a grenade. <laughs> yeah. then, in case you then, didn't know. And then they come in and just mow everyone down and the machine guns. And there's an awesome bit where there's like, so you get the grenade and you go, <laughs> and then you hear, cocksucker. <laughs> Just as an exclamation point. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Great, yeah. And after they've pretty much killed everyone in the karate school, they've got the <laughs> they've got the uh, karate school teacher mm. pinned behind his desk, mm. and one biker menaces him because he wants the information to where Hal lives, right? Because they want revenge against him. Right? And I swear to Christ, one of his. Um, threats is I'll cut your neck off <laughs> <laughs> I missed that one man. I wouldn't know you did that and, uh, I, my, my, my favorite was was the um, uh, the karate teacher uh-huh. who is Paul Gray you're saying right? yes Paul yeah. so is, uh, is the karate teacher like confessing the address where he it's, it's like he's like bleeding and stabbing he keeps stabbing him he's oh yeah he stabs him he yeah. stabs him and he's, and he's like he's like Elm Street. Uh, uh, six. Uh. <laughs> like he's, he's going through the entire address right, right. step by step. But like, oh, uh, I and hate then, stool pigeons. And then right uh, at yeah. the uh, he just dies. Yeah. <laughs> it was great. Uh, great, great. It was a great bat. So bad it's good. Yes. Uh, that scene, yeah. So now they have his address. It's to his building, right? Mm. So the bikers turn over to his building. They find his car. And again, don't touch it. Yes. And they have so the, they I wouldn't even place. shit on it. <laughs> on it. So line. this is the other thing I was wondering about. But when the karate guys went to the funeral, did they not kill a bunch of the bikers, or did they only cut off the penis? It felt like they had killed all the bikers. I think they only cut the cock off. Because my impression after that scene was that they had killed all the bikers, which is why I was like, who are these other bikers that are coming to kill? <laughs> There's like this other f- sect that have come well, back. You know, so I don't know. Could right? be. It's the. It's the Spanish biker network yeah, they so, look yeah. out for each other yeah, I guess so so yeah so they turn up at the, his building and they, they go down in the garden the and they shoot the super of the building because mm. um, they want to know want to know where Hal lives mm. which they the, get his address mm-hmm. and then they shoot him but then they never actually they never actually make it up to the room do they because there's some little kid in the building he's seen what happened mm. and he runs off and warns Hal Hal comes down to the garage and he basically uh, races off in his car right? so then we have a chase scene uh, of sorts, of sorts. <laughs> so now Ron let's talk about this motorcycle sidecar <laughs> what, what the fuck is this There's, most of the bikers have regular bikes right one biker has a sidecar I assume it's a sidecar. It's the most dangerous looking sidecar I've ever seen. But there isn't even a chair in it, right? It's, it's just like a, an iron bar on a wheel. You have to balance yourself on, yes. And not only do you have to balance, the biggest, fattest guy in the gang apparently has to ride in this sidecar. And of course, it unbalances the whole bike, and the bike falls over yes. several, several times. And they have to steal a taxi then. Oh, yeah, that's a very good idea. Let's just take this taxi. Yeah. So then you have this chase, and again, this chase culminates. They go and they go into some kind of gravel quarry or something, and then again, for no apparent reason, all the bikers fall off their bikes, and the guys in the so taxi. Not very good bikers. <laughs> and the guys in the taxi roll their taxi, right? <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> they, they but of even... course, the stingray is never touched. Oh yeah, the stingray is fine. fine. And and Hal is. Is off. off. Like he's got away again. Um, yeah, why they crash is again. Uh, I have no idea. Really. And yeah, this side because the sidecar turns up again. Every time the sidecar turns up, it's just <laughs> it clearly can't be used. <laughs> why do they keep this? 
<laughs> just not going to buy it, his own bike. Yeah, yeah wait. Well, you just need one more bike. Why not just get another bike? Yeah, so. <laughs> that actually, but I have to say that 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 big guy, the big the big <laughs> Nazi biker, yes. is the one that survives. Is he's probably my favorite of, the, of, of all. <laughs> he's the bikes. good as me. He's so. Good. Is he stiletto? Oh. Is that stiletto? I, I don't know. know. I thought it was. Yeah, a to, I, I can't tell. Yeah, I, 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 I kind of yeah. There's him, and then there's the the one with the mustache, and but I I I never really got to know them. No, you never really know the names, but uh, uh, again, not sadly not lacking in character, character development. development. Yeah, but he, I love for some reason. I really liked that uh, that big guy. For some reason, he's. I think it's just because he's always falling out yeah, of side. <laughs> That's great. So then, and then we suddenly cut to. A naked couple running along the beach. Yes, yeah. Again, um, equal opportunities, nudity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like yeah, it was, and it was. Uh, uh, if you weren't shocked by the the full frontal nudity before this part, yes. this is like literally, it's just two completely stark naked people running, yeah. running yeah. on a beach. Right? It's like, and it's not just, it's not like close ups of the face or like one part of the feet or something. Right, right. It's just like. A full body shot of yeah. two guys, two of a man and a woman, stark naked running. <laughs> right, and it's good in a way because it, in a way, it's what it should. It's like it's it's and it's there's no announcement. It's no big deal. No, yeah, yeah. some naked people yeah. deal with it. Yeah, you're adults, I, but and if you think about it, oh, that's how it should be. But it's so it it shows how unusual this uh, happens, uh, you know, especially at the time, that it is kind of jarring. Yeah. Right. Well, but it wasn't even so much the the man for for right. that that got me it was just the fact that. Where is this beach that you could just have people just run naked on it? Right? Like it's, I guess it's like a, a nudist beach. Beach like it's completely, yeah. completely deserted. Right? There's no mm. one there. Right? So. <laughs> yeah. So there's, and they, they have some they have some inane dialogue as well. These two. <laughs> um, so they, so uh, and uh, yeah. So uh, they decide. Okay, we've had enough running around naked on the beach. Let's go hitchhike. Huh. And it's her job to hitchhike, of course, because she's the good looking woman so lo and behold Hal is cruising along obviously either some time has elapsed or he doesn't give a shit that there's bikers after yeah, him yeah after him or killed a bunch of people and so he decides to slow down and pick up this girl and she says oh well I've got this other guy with me and then dick that he is he's like <laughs> no I can't take it and the, the thing is this might be one I don't know. Maybe he wouldn't fit in the car. Yeah. Maybe that's a genuine kind of thing. But you would imagine Hal's the kind of guy who would have said that anyway. Yeah. yeah like yeah. even if he had like a fucking yeah, yeah. Humvee or something, <laughs> he would have said, "No, I'm not taking man. Only you, <laughs> baby." <laughs> and um, yeah, and this chick just leaves. Not, not apologetic at all. No, right? no. Like, it's like, no, no. Sorry, I get it. It's like, it's like, no, no, I can't take care of it. Oh, it's just it. And so to be honest in this scene it's more her because she's like yeah whatever yeah okay I'll do it I'm going with this guy <laughs> and this guy randomly had this giant truck <laughs> really big <laughs> red <laughs> truck hey come back when I do with this truck red big, truck big trunk. and she's like oh yeah well we only knew each other for like three days I was like well where did the trunk come from what are they carrying like, in the truck <laughs> how many clothes do they have because they don't fucking wear them yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Yes, so uh, at first and she, she, and she does end up changing her clothes a few times in right? the, the movie, so she obviously had clothes of her own. Yeah, right. I don't know. Whatever. So, um, yeah, so she's just hitchhiking, she just wants a ride somewhere. But he mentions at this point that he's going to see his parents in the country. His parents seem to be quite wealthy, they own something. And he has the great line You like my family, though my mother is an invalid. <laughs> Great. Um, yeah, so and she decides, uh, yeah, I'm going to go with this smooth guy in the Corvette Stingray, right? Because who, who, would, who would resist exactly. Hal, so, right? And so what a what a great plan on Hal's part, too. He's got this gang of like vicious, like murderous bikers on his tail, and he's going to pick up this random hitchhiker and take her that he's literally just met to his family. So right, right, right. Yeah, and that's what they do. And if any part of the movie does slow down a bit, it, it's this bit, yeah, I, yeah. I think. So basically he goes out and it, indeed his mother is an invalid. She's in a wheelchair. And uh, yeah, if you thought the dialogue was inane before this, 
the fucking crap that either she or her husband yeah. who bangs on about that fucking wine. Oh, this is a really good wine. What do you think of this wine? I knew I'd save this wine for you because you know about wine. And he takes the wine. And says, See, if you say it's good, it must be good. You know, he knows all about it. Shut up about the fucking wine. <laughs> Just so yeah, he turns up and um, and there's there's also some stuff with the. Um, the household staff, right? The maid is really pleased to see him, and there's some uh, below stairs dialogue between her and the gardener, and you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just and uh, and then they, uh, Hal and his new girl, they just kind of wander around the grounds, mm. do a bit of hunting, <laughs> uh, horse riding. Yeah, and, and you get the impression that this is over a matter of a few days because I. Yes, their yeah. clothes keep keep changing. Yes, which is why I knew yeah. that she obviously has some clothes there because she keeps changing her clothes. And he keeps changing his clothes. And the mother wants to go to Polynesia. Yeah. Um, they have sex in the bath. Yeah. They have sex outside. Yeah. Uh, they have sex. I think there's another. Sex. There's a lot of sex. Yeah. And then and then he has. Uh, he go, they go hunting. Then he goes to shoot a bird, but it's an airplane. Oh, uh, you're uh, crazy! You're crazy shooting at an airplane. Yeah, and so yeah, and then the first time they have sex is in the in the bathtub, uh-huh. uh, w- w- with with the dirtiest water ever. <laughs> yeah, no, it's like, yeah, it's like, it reminded me of um, there's that famous uh, when they were making the movie uh, performance, you know, the one with Mick Jagger, the Nicholas Rowe okay. movie, and Warner's apparently one of the Warner's executives said yeah. like, even the bath water is dirty. <laughs> okay, but it reminded me of like those types of movies where you. You make the, the water purposely opaque so right. that you can't see what's going on. But of course, that's obviously not an issue with this movie. Did so I yeah. understand why the water was so so filthy. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. they have this kind of set scene, which was kind of uh, strange. But then the more strange one, I think, was the hunting one, where they're just in the woods, and then suddenly they just start having sex. It was just very, and they were just like tugging the right. underwear off awkwardly. And it was yeah. just very like strange to watch. There's also the uh, w- when the fucking dad's banging on it with his wine. There's this really kind of not at all erotic footsy scene where they're w- wearing like big boots. And it's just like, yeah, it just looks like, like yeah. dirty and yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but anyway, I, I think that this girl actor is quite quite attractive. I oh yeah, yeah, yeah no, it's Babsy for me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Babsy's dead. Actually, I discovered. But, oh really? uh, Yeah, she died quite young, like in her thirties oh, or something. No. Uh, uh, Andrea Albani. I, her name has probably hasn't been said so many times in the yeah. short space of time as in this in podcast. Years. Yeah. This is the official Andrea Albani fan club. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. So it slows. Uh, to be honest, it's not. It, it's still. Um, great it's still all, all good yeah, yeah, but great, the yeah. movie does slow down a little bit I, I noticed on the fourth watch is when, when there's no bikers or anything on the scene it tends to slow down so, the, yeah. the bikers how, the how real Hal himself doesn't really uh, well he's much. just uh, he's just really objectionable I just don't <laughs> like Hal he's just <laughs> such a dick isn't yeah, he yeah. but in his defence he doesn't actually do anything to inspire the ire of these of these bikers, no. right? Which is why the main no. conflict doesn't really make sense. Or, he's kind of like he is a dick, but he doesn't doesn't need to have himself and his whole family killed. He's kind of like he he's a anything. character I would imagine. You remember those guys that James Spader played in the eighties? Uh, I can imagine like he's someone that even the character James Spader plays would have said, oh, "He's a dick." He's a dick. <laughs> <laughs> he's like this preppiest yeah. of preppy yeah, types. Preppy he's like, and like womanizing, you know, whatever. So. You can imagine he he like enjoys eating, uh, you know, fried panda or something at some exclusive <laughs> restaurant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, oh, mm. but uh, one of my other favorite lines I wrote down after this was uh, uh, the very first time he and this girl have sex. Yes. The very first time. So the, it's re- so just they've getting gotten the to new this house. hitchhiking girl. The new hitchhiking girl. Yeah. So he just picked this girl up and like. Like minutes later, or hours later, you don't know how long far it is, whatever. He gets to his parents' house. They have dinner. They play footsies under the table, uh-huh. and then they start to have sex. And he has it comes out with the, the great <laughs> line of, uh, which was let me write it down. It goes, "You don't know how long I've been, I've waited for this moment." Should <laughs> 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 be guffaw out yeah. loud because yeah. he literally has been minutes before. Yes. You I was know, thinking about it while I was shagging. You don't know how long I've waited for this moment. Yes. Are <laughs> oh, you such a romantic? <laughs> 
I was thinking about this the whole time I was fucking that other girl yeah. who I who was just <laughs> the next day after this other girlfriend but, I mean, like, had been raped. I mean, like, I, I mean, any of the other girls that he had sex with in the movie, you could have gotten that line passed because there may have been a background mm. where he was w- building up to having sex with this woman, right? But this one, literally, she literally just met her. So, but why would they throw the, you don't know how long I've waited for this moment. It was, yeah, that was my favorite. Love is blind, Ron. Yes, there's there's blind. no rules to love. Mm. Um, and, oh, and as well, one other thing I've noticed on this, uh, speaking of the soundtrack, on this farm, on this kind of big house with uh, the estate, they have a horse, mm. and the horse was actually dubbed by a human as well. Oh, I don't know if you noticed it. There, there was actually, I could tell it was a person going. <laughs> <laughs> so it was so oh. good that they, they had to even dub the horse. There's so much more to discover in this movie. <laughs> yeah, next time, listen to the horse sound. It's oh, we didn't mention so far that uh, uh, we did. Uh, uh, sorry, I just noticed we mentioned Crocus and we mentioned um, the Jackies. Mm. But we haven't mentioned this awesome. I actually quite like the uh, the kind of incidental funky disco uh, theme by E flat. E flat, yes. which is just I, I really yeah 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 it's awesome. It was really good a lot of the time. My favorite was at the at the, near the end when they're in the the movie studio. Mm. It sounded almost exactly like Pink Panther. Like the theme from <laughs> yes, Panther. It did. It was almost yeah, yeah. Almost almost exactly. It was but this main theme is I could have that on a loop. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, yeah, fantastic. That's okay. I'm wondering if we might put that on the end of the podcast yeah, actually. Yeah. Let's record that. Look on. out for it. Yeah. Um yes, so anyway, uh back back to the bikers. Um and the bikers I I guess uh have licked their wounds. And got drunk or whatever. Still no women, no biker mamas around. So they awake in the morning. They come out of wherever they've been lurking in their hideout. Uh, stilettos naked. Uh, f- fully frontal naked again, wandering about. He goes take a piss. Take a piss. <laughs> while one of the other bikers kicks him in the ass. <laughs> hey, stiletto, you water the flowers? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. what of it? <laughs> Like you can tell him something, he kicks him in the ass and then kind of you know, walks away. And he does he messes down it ten times. Yes. yes. <laughs> and then Stiletto chases after him and does the line, Let me piss in your mouth. <laughs> yeah, you probably like it too. Um yeah, so yeah. it's all very, very homoerotic. Oh, yeah, great, great. And they get back on their bikes like at this fucking rickety. Yeah, rickety um, yeah. And then there's a and then they, they 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 are on their way to for revenge. And then there's a bit. I'm guessing it must have just been unexpected, and they didn't do another take. I don't think they would have planned this, but it's kind of awesome nonetheless. The, you know, they're they're ready for action, right? Taking they they pulling out of their hideout, and then wait, a bus, <laughs> a bus, <laughs> in front of them. <laughs> because you know. <laughs> they obey the laws of the, laws the room. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, a bus. So yeah, but then they, it's, I thought it was funny that they had to like, tra- like translate this line. It's like, wait, a bus. Okay, now let's go. Wait. <laughs> you can't right. make this stuff up. No, no. So, yeah, so they end up, the bikers uh, go to this country house. Mm. And there's a bit of a clue actually to how they found it. Oh. I, I think there's a line of something like, yeah, that gas station attendant was right, or something. Uh, yeah, yeah. And this gas station attendant actually turns up again later, right? So uh, he's quite, he's kind of like the, the oracle that they, oh, <laughs> that they all go to part. for their information. So the bikers turn up um, at this country house, break in, and, well, while Hal and the girl are off horse, they, they basically slaughter the family and the servants. The maid, the gardener, gets some shears. Yeah, she was right into his mouth, and and, and, and um, which is kind of a fun scene where you saw it from his point of view, and then the yeah, shears going. Yeah, so yeah, it's, it's not bad actually. Play that, around with some cinematography. That's quite a good bit of effect, though, yeah. when you see mm. his body with the shears. Yeah, it doesn't look, did. but except that they literally just covered his face with red paint. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's not bad. It's yeah, not bad. I didn't think, oh, what a terrible effect, uh, but, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, so. um, and then the, 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 I think what my favorite line in the hall or two lines actually is 
that when they put a knife into the maid's stomach and they slit her stomach open and her intestines are coming out, <laughs> I can't remember which one of them yells, We're the kings of the universe! Followed by, The whole world will admire us! <laughs> Yes. Wow. That was very that's good. Th- yes. Yeah, I think that's my favourite line. Okay. Is the whole world were admirers <laughs> for slitting <laughs> open this maid's stomach and pulling out her desk. Yes. I, I, around that time, I got the impression that a lot of the um, the lines were. It was almost like it hadn't been translated. Uh, that's why I was like, it was either translated really poorly mm. or it was just sort of ad lib some lines about how you were very proud of yourself. You know what I mean? You know, right, and so it was right. just the, the, the voice actors just ad libbing something that's made it sound like they were really happy about yeah. themselves. So that's why I got the impression that it was like, you're just making this shit up yeah. as you go over it. So. What the fuck? Yeah. I'm getting paid. Yeah, yeah. No one will ever yeah, see yeah, this yeah. film. <laughs> <laughs> no one ever, no yeah. one's ever going to make a podcast yeah. about this. I think my favorite line is coming up though. So. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just thought they kill the entire family and then Hal and the girl return to the house they find a gardener and oh my god they go in the house and everyone's dead um, and then Hal gets his emotional big emotional <laughs> acting scene right, where he finds his dead mother on the floor and it's, a, it's an acting masterclass isn't it Ron? yes absolutely <laughs> it's uh, fair yeah fair. it's yeah. really gotcha in, in the oh. in Kill them all. Kill them all, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, so um, you know, the the war of attrition continues, mm-hmm. right? Right. So Hal goes out again, the stingray, and the aforementioned gas station attendant, I'm guessing it's the same one, he asks him, what, what, you know, have you seen these bikers or whatever? And then he says something along the lines of, oh, yeah. Everyone knows where their hideout is. Yeah, they had the same line. It goes, yeah, everyone knows their hideout. <laughs> so I read the exact same line. Yeah. Like, I was like, why is it a hideout? If yeah. it was... <laughs> and this might seem like nitpicking, but nitpicking, but I clearly, had to, when he's given directions, he indicates left, and the dubbing says, yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just a small thing. Um, yeah, so then... Um, he goes, I guess, whatever. It's a strange. I remember th- thinking it's a strange set of directions, though, isn't it? Yeah. Turn up, go over three bridges. Yeah, three bridges. <laughs> it's very specific. Yeah. yeah. So then he goes, I'm guessing he's going the right way, but rather than go direct uh, there, he goes to a bar, mm. isn't he? Now he goes into this bar, and, and another good looking woman, uh, the barmaid. Yeah, who I, I fully expected him to have sex with. But yes. That. that Really, just because she has her breasts yeah, kind of basically falling out. out. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so you're like, oh, well, here's the next sex scene. But of course, yes. they they just turn but, your expectations upside down. Because as, as well, he does. He is clearly uh, whether he was directed or not. He was when he goes in and he has a drink. He's clearly just staring at her tits. Yeah. I mean, which you would, but he's just <laughs> just staring at her tits. <laughs> and rather than ask nicely or normally she grabs her arm and goes where are those bikers or where are those hoodlums or something well but first you have to talk about the guy next to him yes right. there's, a, there's a guy uh, and I well the, the big reveal we don't know yet right? but there's an old fellow there just <laughs> rambling to himself yeah I, I, I get all the girls yeah, I get any girl you'll see, you'll yes. see I can get any girl I wanted yeah. and she but, the bartender of course is just ignoring him yeah, and stuff. yeah. Because he's just there staring. Yeah. I wonder how many guys go into this place just to stare at her tits. Yeah. Um, but she doesn't give him any information. Mm. But we do find out that she is helping because there's some bikers in the back. back. Yeah. But before that, we get to see this drunken guy leave. Mm. And it turns out he's a one-legged man yeah, yes. on crutches. Right. right? And he has a great exit line. And this is my favourite line. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Jaron, take it away. <laughs> this is my <laughs> he gets up and it's sort of, okay, now you see, it must have been a real per, like paraplegic. Oh yeah, right? it's a guy so with one leg. Yeah, so yeah. He literally had one leg because yeah. they didn't have green screens or and it's, it's like CGI a, back then. It's like a really rinky-dink mm-hmm. little roadside. Yeah, yeah. But it's, it's like, it doesn't look like, uh, I think, if you uh, weren't European, mm-hmm. uh, you wouldn't necessarily think of it as a bar yeah, it looks yeah. more like a really small diner but it's got like some uh, draft beer and yeah, yeah. yeah so it's a little 
divey looking right, place. Right, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And he's just rambling on about stuff, and she's ignoring him. And he's like, "Well, why didn't you? Why didn't you tell them? Or why didn't you tell him? Or whatever?" And she's like, "Well, right. she goes off and t- talks to the bikers yeah. in the back." And, and I think she says something like, "Get out! Yeah. Good riddance!" Yeah, get or out. something, yeah. Yeah, something like that. And so finally, he gets up. He's on his crutches, and he's got one leg. He turns around. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do it justice. This is my favorite line of the whole movie, where he goes, "He goes, goodbye, you bitch." <laughs> Yeah, it is. It, yeah, I, I think can't you have to hear it. him you deliver it. Yeah, this yeah. delivery was Goodbye. perfect. Goodbye, you, you bitch. bitch. <laughs> and then he hobbles <laughs> off. <laughs> and uh, then Hal returns, and uh, the, just when you thought like there can't be any more kind of awesome scenes, yeah, he comes in and and the the he's listening at the door, and the and the the barmaid with the tits is uh, kind of. Hey, I can't remember his name. There's some guy looking for you, whatever. And then he's grumbling. <laughs> he has some line, and she doesn't say anything because I think he knocks her out or something. Or yeah. and he says, "Wow, well, you hurst you squealing like a pig, and then you don't say nothing or something." So the, the, one of the bikers is in this bar, maybe he's right. hanging out with a barmaid or something, because apparently they are actually interested in women huh. all uh, evidence to the contrary well they did rape uh, well well, Dubsy, right? well sort of uh, yeah <laughs> so um so Hal goes in and follows the, where is this voice coming from mm. and of course uh, because you you know there's no other way you could possibly write this scene in, <laughs> in any the biker wouldn't be doing anything other than sitting on the toilet yeah. with his cock hanging out in in full view uh, so uh, Hal goes and he, sh- he, he put your hands up he's got the, a gun isn't he and th- this is where I got a little confused okay. uh, well not confused but I was surprised because until this point I had thought that that guy which is the big guy we've been talking about the guy been falling yeah, off the high yeah. car I thought that he was the leader until right. that point Cause, because because the leader is actually the bald guy who actually is not involved with most of the movie. You see him only a little bit at the very beginning, and then you don't see him again until the uh-huh. very end. So until this whole thing is finished, I thought that the big guy was kind of the right. leader because he was kind of. I think he's the second in command. Maybe the second in command. So I thought, why would they? Ki- why would he kill the leader first? Yeah. Right. I mean, that's just sort of. Like, to be fair, yeah. as well, even if he isn't, the, he goes the rock as the. Because after this, the other guy, I don't even remember him. Yeah, from yeah, before, yeah, right? yeah. So, and then all of a sudden, there's like these but other random no name guys. Maybe this guy saw in the script how good this scene was uh, and demanded, and demanded he do it. I want the uh, toilet no, scene. No, so, so that's why I was kind of like, I was like, well, why were they killing the main guy first? I was like, where's the climax? And so and that's right. why I actually, ah, oh, there was the other guy that I totally forgot right. about. So that's why, yeah. So, so he's on the toilet. Uh, trousers around his ankles, cock flopping out. Mm. So um, Hal, who yeah, I forgot to mention, he has the gun, right? Is um, threatens him with a gun and then shoots his right hand mm. and gets information where the other. And he's quite clever as well because he tells him, he says, at the movie studio, and then he says, and what about the others? Like. There isn't a back and forth about like uh, there's one guy at the movie studio. Right. Somehow Hal just knows psychically no. they're split into two <laughs> groups. <laughs> anyway, again, uh, nitpicking. Yes, but, yeah, yeah. But and then uh, he offs this biker by throwing a grenade into the toilet <laughs> and close the door. <laughs> there's a big explosion. And the windows blow out, mm. and then we have a we, we have a view inside the toilet post explosion. And this guy is just fucking evaporated. Yeah. Right? This, yeah, there's, there's nothing the left. Whole body part. There's nothing left. It's just yeah. a just, blown up toilet. Just doing it with some blood on it, yeah. So <laughs> it's like a drummer um, spontaneously combusting in <laughs> yeah, spinal yeah, tap. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So and and then his next port of call. And of course, he never tries to get off the toilet once the grenade is dropped <laughs> into the toilet. He just sits in the toilet. No. No. <laughs> no. I. Yeah, I'm kind of curious what he was doing on yeah. the time. <laughs> yeah, he wasn't taking the shit or anything. No, because he's sitting back he too far, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> he's just he hanging out in the toilet. Off, I, I don't know. I don't yeah, know. he'd, he'd be porn. watching the barmaid's tits. Yeah, gay porn. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, again, the wonderful backstory yes. you could make for sure, this. Sure, yes. There should be fan fiction. There Absolutely. should be a Mad Fox's Mad fan Fox's fiction fan universe. Fiction. 
Mad Maybe we're the guys to... Mad Fox is two. Um, so, so he heads next to the, the junkyard, right? Mm. And there's another biker there, and there's a junkyard shootout mm-hmm. fight thing. Um, I don't have much to say about that, really. Yeah, yeah. And, and then it leads us to another one of these chases, right? Yeah, this is... Now, a, this is actually chase. probably the, the best chase scene in the film, though, just because... Um, well, well, first of all, there's one thing I was wondering... If, because the chase kind of takes them through a slightly like like an intersection or something, uh-huh. and an accident is caused, right? So it's like one car hits another uh-huh. car, and it's almost like 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 the kind of comic relief you get in a, like a Smokey and the Bandit, you know? Uh-huh. There's like people are like, oh yeah, uh-huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. But what's interesting about this is the one guy, and you know these cars are real fucking junkers, right? yeah, they're yeah. nothing like the Stingray. They're, yes. they're cars they could afford to yeah, smash of up. Course, right? yeah. So the one guy comes out of his little van thing, like wielding like a piece of the bonnet or some piece of the the metalwork on the outside, the body of the car, the bodywork, right? And he, and he, How would you like it if I smashed up your car? Right? And he starts hitting the other guy's car. But he lifts it up to swing it. I swear to God, he hits the other guy in the face. Oh, really? I missed that. Yeah, oh. you watch that again. He goes, oh, no, 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 and he swings and he this guy and judging by the film so far, I don't think this was deliberate choreography because mm, uh, this guy goes down no. so I think this guy was genuinely smashed in the face and then he goes over and starts hitting his car and I don't think he's noticed because you'll notice yeah. he's hitting the car and he looks over and he suddenly <laughs> goes towards him and there's a cut right so I reckon someone was quite badly damaged uh, yeah. <laughs> in this scene <laughs> they, they just, uh, let's just keep it in yeah, so Oh, well, it's um, good, better production yeah, value. Yeah, great, yeah. Um, <laughs> and then after that little bit, um, um, Hal chases the biker down the road with the, with his shotgun out mm. the window. And I, I didn't have time to, because I was too busy watching Mad Foxes again, <laughs> I didn't have time to rewatch it to kind of confirm my memory is correct. But isn't this like a direct lift from the original Mad Max, this this kind of in car camera could be yeah, while know. he's driving well, alongside with a shotgun propped up against the window and then he in, blows in, the biker in, away as in, he drives instead past. of that what my thought of this was was that because uh, it has it shows like the car closing in on the bike on the bike yeah. and my f- first thought was like well why doesn't he just run the bike off the road or right, like right. he did to the other guys right, right? but of course or, or didn't <laughs> what because they just fell off their yeah or, yeah we're just saying yeah. <laughs> Blow away, he falls off. Maybe he's yeah. shocked because this is the first time yeah. one of these bikers hasn't fallen yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. So, so my thought is, like, well, why does he need this gun? Why does he just run? So, and then of course it comes to me that they can't do that because they might damage the car, right? Ah, so, yeah. So that's yeah. why, right? That's why they've got the gun instead, right? Yes. So, but then of course he, I'm not sure about the the homage to any other movies, but definitely it shows the gun from the inside of the car, and he blows it away, and then for some reason he hits the bike with the gun, and yeah. the gun. And the and the, the car just ex- bike just explodes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Two pieces. All bikes explode. Just, just, hell- just like a. It, would, yeah. it clearly uh, yeah it hits it, yeah it divides into two yeah. pieces yeah, yeah. So, yeah two flaming pieces. It's been welded yeah, yeah. in advance. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> but to be fair, this bit is the only chase scene in the movie that that bit when he's chasing. Maybe it's just because of the in car camera thing. It's actually got a bit of kinetic energy oh, to it okay, it's yeah. nearest to a right. exciting yeah, yeah. car chase scene right, the movie yeah. has right? so there's one more biker dispatched and then and then it's slow they have they have this um, strange they do this a couple of times near the end of the movie where the it suddenly slows down and I guess they're just trying to establish that I don't know why it's important but they're establishing that He's kind of entering or leaving the city centre. Right? Mm. I'm guessing this is right. Barcelona. But then you you have this quite long scene of of him driving through traffic yeah. very slowly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah there's lots of traffic. Uh, uh, it's like, oh, okay. Uh, it just seems like something you could quite easily yeah, have yeah, cut out. Kind of, yeah, so. But anyway, I guess it's seventy-six something. minutes. Right? Yeah. So he goes to yeah seventy-seven <laughs> <the> magic. <laughs> So then he goes to the, he ends up at this um, uh, movie studio, mm. I guess. Oh, no. First we have the, the dominatrix. Hang on, I don't know. Yes, but isn't, isn't that in the movie studio? 
Is it? Yes, I think it's in like the top room of the movie studio. Oh. For some peculiar reason. Okay, again, so this is yeah. confusing. I, th- I thought there were two different locations. No, I think they go to the. He goes to the movie studio and he's oh, okay. like you do. He's doing the. Dun, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Dun, dun. No, but there was a setting up the dominatrix scene, and then yes, it's him a little bit before. And then it goes yeah, back yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so basically, this biker, the one, as far as I can tell, we've never seen never before. Seen him before. Or yeah, yeah. He's never really been noticeable, yeah, yeah. and he's hanging out with uh, like an Ilsa, she wolf of the SS type, with uh, you know she's in garters and yeah, yeah, bodice, like and, don, like the Nazi dominatrix, yeah, basically, with right? the she's, swastika, and it, yeah. this is indoors, so yeah, everything yeah. with the swastika is fine. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and so she, uh, this is my other one of my other favorite lines, where yeah. where he wants he's asking her to dominate him and uh-huh. so she, she says I loathe you yes I loathe you I loathe you I loathe you I loathe you I loathe you, I loathe yes. you, I loathe you. <laughs> like over and over when he's got <laughs> and he's got the gimp mask yeah, on gimp, okay. yeah. I loathe you 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 <laughs> this is very awkward <laughs> just from the beginning when he's like getting in the mood yeah. and he's like he's had a few drinks and he's like hey baby can't you see I'm ready whenever I have a few drinks I'm in the mood it's just a, the whole thing is yeah. just yeah, you can tell that the, the, the girl playing the dominators felt a little uncomfortable in her role as well. And I loathe you. 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 And then Hal eventually... It's funny mentioning that... I'm wondering if it was shot in sequence because, um, like I said, that uh, chase, the last chase, has a bit of flair to it. Mm-hmm. And in this scene as well, when he's going around the movie studio, there's like that scene where he... Moves some kind of uh, like a stool oh, yeah, thing, yeah, and yeah, the yeah. camera's on it, and it follows. Yeah. And you're thinking that's the first kind of anything s- stylish. Style, well, anything the exception styli- of the uh, the shears in the guy's mouth. Well, yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's yeah, true. Yeah, so yeah, so the, there's the, these little sashes. There's, there's about two or three in the yeah. entire movie where they actually tried to do something interesting with the camera. It's like shot. Paul Grau like got a bit better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or someone else has said, "Hey, you should try this," and Paul's like, "Okay, yeah, yeah. do that." So. Or maybe it's a second unit guy yeah, who has more talent. Some more talent. Yeah, he, that's right. he got some advice from someone. Yeah, so we're, but of course it's obviously a movie studio, and so it's already set up right. with the camera, and so then they decide to use the camera yeah. in the movie. Right? Yeah. So, yeah so. It doesn't actually make any sense that he would move it in move that it. way. Yeah, yeah. It, it, was, it meant nothing, right? No, so, but, it was, but it looked it was nice. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, and eventually he kills the biker in the. Gimp mask, right? Well, first the there's another biker, isn't there? Like a one that jumps down on top. Oh, of Oh, that's him? right. I forgot yeah, about yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember what is it is. Yeah, that's why I thought there were two different locations because there's two different bikers. One's in the right. Uh, one's in the actual studio, and so the heat. They're like that's where the Pink Panther Matt. Yeah, yeah. Is, And he's like he's creeping around. There's another one that they're right. kind of cat and mousing each other, and then the biker jumps yes, down yes, from the yes, second right. floor on top. But of well, him. but if it is two different locations, there's no there's scene no, of him yeah, going from one to the other. No, yeah. So, so anyway, so then he. This other biker comes down. They have this sort of fight scene where he like kind Stab, of stabs yeah, him, and yeah. then yeah, and then the gimp guy gets shot in the and then head. he goes up and he gets the gimp guy and he yeah, shoots him. Yeah, and, he and kills and and the then I guess shoot. that's yeah, I guess that's the job done, right? Yeah. So so we get another sl- shot of him slowly Going home. leaving the city, but yeah. this time backed by Crocus, yes, singing celebration. celebration. <laughs> ah, it's, it's, <laughs> Fantastic. So you think that basically this is it, that the movie's over? Yeah, you're, well, you but know, you've had your money's worth, let's put it that way. If this was the end of the movie, you would have no reason to complain. Complain, yeah. Um, yes, but, indeed, but. So, so yeah, he heads back to, to his pad, I guess, um, and then totally, genuinely unexpectedly, he enters his... He goes up to his yeah. apartment, and it turns out that is it is it the girl? It's the hitchhiker. Hitchhiker. It is it's the hitchhiker, hitchhiker girl. Yeah. Isn't so it? Randomly, she's at his yes. apartment now. Well, I guess they've hooked up, right? Because yeah. he's been waiting for this moment. <laughs> I guess <laughs> you don't know how long he's been waiting for. <laughs> and the the guy, there's a guy in the apartment with her with a gun, yeah. and it turns out it's the baldy, mustache, rounded glasses guy who got his cock. Cut off. Uh, I assumed he'd bled to death yeah, or, or died, choked yeah, on his exactly. own cock or something. Yeah. But no, apparently he's still around. Yeah. And wanting, wanting his revenge. Yes, and he's got a bomb. Um <laughs> he's got a it looks like uh, like a very big remote control <laughs> car. <Yeah. laughs> 
<laughs> sort of with a big aerial yeah, sticking yeah. out of it. But yeah, he's got a bomb. And uh, yeah, he says in there, rather than shoot you, I, I, you know, I'll set off this bomb. And then we'll kill, uh, I'll kill, rather kill all myself. I'll kill everybody, I'll kill yeah. everybody, including myself. And he goes, do you know what this is? This is a bomb. You know, he, he <laughs> but he you also know. says, which is, I didn't catch this until the last time I watched it. When, <laughs> when, when, he, when Hal enters, this guy goes, be careful, my little rabbit. <laughs> Um, so you think oh here we go there's, oh, what's going to happen there's a, you know, how is he going to get this bomb away from and then he just goes ha, 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 presses the button the, the end, end. <laughs> the end no end credits nothing done and then I wrote this down I wrote, this is my last note I wrote down greatest ending ever <laughs> <laughs> like wow ge- genuinely oh yeah genuinely surprising oh really yeah surprising ending yeah, so not I not expect that no, at all. No, <laughs> and, on, uh, and I, no credits too. Yeah, I didn't expect that either. So. And I was watching this, um, like the play. I was watching it loops, right? Mm. So uh, the end, and then the film starts again. <laughs> it's an easy, easy ruckus, and I was sat there, and I was like, if I didn't have anything else to do today, I would watch this at the end. <laughs> like, I think I but would become you, but a prisoner. Think, but then you think, <laughs> Of this movie, it's like the Dark Tower. Of, of, of it's, the, it's like the perfect mixtape. Yeah, yeah. The way it yeah. ends. Yeah. Oh. Just, easy, easy. Oh, I'm it. watching this again. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. For for all of its flaws, it was. <laughs> it is a flaw. It, this it, movie it, is it, a it's flaw. Nothing but a flaw. But it was genuinely, genuinely entertaining. I, oh I yeah. Like, I never stopped smiling the entire time. I don't know why. It was just really. Tickled, tickled me pink yeah, yeah it's uh, like I said uh, yeah four times happily watch it again yeah, yeah, right yeah, now yeah <laughs> just um, yeah and, and so, I mean of course as I said it ticks all the boxes for every bad movie you can now have to think of bad script bad acting bad directing bad sets bad costume right. bad special effects everything is bad but it just on yes. some level it works you know, how many movies tick those boxes and just are just bored are just bo- yeah, yeah. they're just terrible right so but it was still Beyond, you know, against all odds, it was still in- incredibly yes. entertaining. <laughs> the only thing that is, uh, confuses me is, well, yeah, <laughs> not yeah, the only not thing. The, only, yeah. the other thing is, why it doesn't have a bigger cult following, is actually? Because ah, uh, yeah, I, that's what I didn't understand. I mean, on the IMDb page, there isn't even any trivia or like any rate, maybe right. a few ratings. Because um, it's got a 5.5, so you think it's just sort of like a normal, kind of shitty, you know, like movie that no one really ever sees. Because in the UK, interestingly, um, you're familiar with the the video nasties thing we had in the UK, right? In the yeah, okay. Which is so, for our listeners. Yes. So basically, in 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 uh, the early yes, all two of you <laughs> who I know know this anyway. But never mind. Uh, in the early eighties, on the early days of video, we had the the thing that was dubbed the video nasties scare because videos when they originally came out, they were kind of uh, unrated, right? They weren't. Um, rated in the same way that movies set for the theatre were, right? So it was totally unregulated, really. And, you know, in the early days of videos, all sorts of crap was released, right? And there was a big kind of outcry from certain uh, pressure groups and and the tabloids and stuff. And there were these things called uh, dubbed video nasties. Mm -hmm. And it was mostly kind of um, then fairly new... 70s and early 80s kind of like Italian cannibal movies, zombie movies, cannibal holocaust and stuff like gory stuff and you know people were up in arms about this you know so there was kind of all this public pressure and there were you know there were uh, search and seizures things were taken off video channels were, and there was an of- official video nasties list so basically there was it was in two parts you had like Part one of the analysis were films actually found to contravene the Obscene Publications Act, and they were outright banned, right? Mm. And lots of those films were banned for decades, right? And growing up, the era I grew up in as a horror fan in the UK, that it was all about tracking down the video nasties. Mm. So you would spend uh, all your time and energy tracking down mostly shitty movies right? that yeah, weren't yeah, even yeah. that shocking right, or anything yeah, yeah. Right? but 
but it's 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 a very important part of the the UK horror fandom scene. I, I'm I would imagine younger generations have grown up in the UK since these films have now been re-released and cut. They don't really understand right, why. That's yeah. The big deal. But anyway, there's this kind of video nasties list, which was basically a shopping list for horror movie fans. Ah, it, it was in two, but there was ones that were, uh, like I said, found to contravene the obscene publications act. And then there was like a second part of that list. I'm not quite sure what the difference was, but they were slightly considered not quite as obscene, but but Still they were banned. banned. Yeah, and it's about seventy nine titles okay. or something. But then there was a third list. And this was like um, stuff that was seized just almost as random because you have to remember this was like cops being sent out, uh, you know, <coughs> around the country to video stores and stuff, and they were just grabbing stuff Wait, at looked, random. Looked kind yeah. of like so they yeah. suspicious. So they'd heard zombie flesh. I saw another movie with like the title Zombie and or Cannibal. Or, you know, they probably only watched. Even if they watched any of it, they probably just went by the video because the video artwork was outrageous. Right, and right, yeah, like yeah. the one for the famous one for Driller Killer with the guy getting a drill in his eye yeah, on the yeah, cover. Yeah, yeah. So, and this third uh, list of another eighty titles or something, and these were titles that did weren't uh, uh, did didn't contravene the Obscene Publications Act, but were just considered kind of iffy. And rather than uh, something to do with not being prosecuted at the high court, being prosecuted uh, kind of a, at a different level, and some of these films they weren't banned, but a lot of them. The thing is, in the UK, you can't release stuff unrated, like you can in the United States. Right. So you have to have a rating, mm -hmm. or you can't. So a lot of these things, uh, distributors didn't even bother sending them for classification because they thought they wouldn't pass, or you know, it's an expensive process, you know. So. Mad Foxes is actually on this third list. Oh, really? Okay. But the thing is, it's not even the uncut version we watched. It's like some other pre-cut version missing all the nudity and the gore. How long is it? Like 10 minutes long? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I have no idea even how Mad Foxes would play in that version. Ah. But the uh, apologies for this lengthy uh, ramble, but the reason I bring it up is because Almost anything, because the, the official video Nazis list was a, a shopping list for UK horror fans, right? But also, the stuff on the third list as well, once you'd exhausted the yeah, stuff, you'd nine. look for the other stuff, right? Yeah. So, the shittiest, most boring films you can imagine have kind of minor cult followings mm -hmm. in, in the UK, and then they've spread around the world. But for some reason, Mad Foxes doesn't really have that... There is a. It, it's not totally unknown. There is some. There are some kind of Euro trash fans who. Well, I'm. Who I'm, you know treated like the holy grail it deserves yeah, to be treated. Right, as. Yeah, I, I'm. Re I'm reading the uh, some of the IMDb uh -huh. uh, like reviews on here, and uh, this person written by uh, Callum McDonald, okay. which is probably someone in the UK, would be my guess with a name like Callum McDonald, uh, says that. Uh, that people in his town uh -huh. take this film to an almost cult-like status. Okay, okay. So Which town is that? Does it doesn't, it doesn't okay. say. So, but and it was because of Stiletto specifically. Oh, okay. Because it says he's uh, uh, he rapes the hero's girlfriend, gets drunk, and attempts karate kicks with no pants on, <laughs> kills the gardener with a pair of shears, and then there's the line, "Hey Stiletto, give her a good screw." There you right, are. So yeah, so copyright okay. Colin McDonald. Colin McDonald. So uh, the yeah, so I, I assume it's probably pockets of people. Maybe so. That yeah. Have these. Yes, you would imagine if you had. I mean, I assume it, can, it, it has to do with probably one person finding it, yeah. and then ha giving their their yeah. video tape to yeah. other friends, kind of. Yeah. Right? So if you would have found this on yeah. the YouTube, oh, been absolutely, yeah. you my, friend, my friends, friends would love this movie. Yeah. if I had found it. Uh, you yeah. yeah so. and I would imagine it might even play relatively well in a cut form. I mean, I don't know. I, I it wouldn't be like, quite. Our, the same our first episode with Brain Dead, which would be the same thing as like that. I can't even imagine what that cut version would look like I mean like with, with without the gore it's almost like without yeah. the gore and sex there's no there's nothing left but the gore <laughs> is the essence of brain dead I suppose without it there's no point in making it mm -hmm. whereas I I would imagine Mad Fox's the lunacy of it would still survive I mean if you imagine that the dub's exactly the same I think it just, oh, yeah. just there's just trims so you don't see this guy's cock or yeah, something then, then I would imagine it would right. still play it might even be even better because it would 
the editing would 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 suffer, right? So right, it would right. be even more disjointed and strange. Mm. So yeah, so there we go. Yeah. Mad Foxes. Yeah, absolutely one of the best worst movies ever made. Yeah, the highest so. recommendation from me and Ron, I think. Yeah, I'd say so far. It was really, yeah, it's thoroughly, thoroughly entertaining. I have to say that, yeah. Yeah. So listen up um, for so maybe we'll put a little bit of E flat at the end of this. Wherever you can find uh, this movie, try to find it. Yeah. Like in all yeah. your normal sites and, and uh, sources. Try to whatever you can do to find a yeah. copy of this because it's it worth is the effort. Absolutely, one hundred percent worth it. Um, still not sure who the Mad Foxes are though. No, no idea. But most importantly, Ron, I think that on the strength of this podcast, the whole world will admire yes. us. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Here's a little present for you. Look out, it's a grenade! Oh, no.